Hi, my name is Dr. Charlene Irvin Babcock, and I'm a practicing emergency medicine physician in Detroit, Michigan. And on this YouTube, I'd like to show you how to modify one ventilator to ventilate two or four patients simultaneously. Because of the COVID-19 pandemic, many healthcare providers are struggling with a situation where they have, may have more than one patient needing ventilation and not enough ventilators to go around. So that's why I'm putting this YouTube together so that I can show you how to modify one ventilator to ventilate more than one patient. It's based on a feasibility study that was published in 2006 in Academic Emergency Medicine with one of my colleagues, Dr. Greg Manis. Uh, the name of that manuscript is a single ventilator for multiple si uh, simulated patients to meet disaster surge. And at the end of this YouTube, I'll provide a link so you can click on it and go to the abstract. In that study, we just looked at simple equipment available in the emergency department and a way to modify the ventilator to ventilate four patients. And we used a T-tube, which is, this is from a respiratory therapist cart, it's a drainage tube they use for aerosols. And we cut the bag off so we have a T-tube. And what we did is we took one T-tube and four different adapters. These are 22 millimeter adapters. So here you have a T-tube here, here, and here, and four I mean, and three 22 millimeter adapters. And in this configuration, we have four ports that we can connect the expiration to or the inspiration cycle to. So we did this on both the expiration cycle and the inspiration cycle and connected the tube that we normally connect to the ventilator for inspiration directly to these tubes. We hooked them up to test lungs and we watched them for six hours. Six hours both on pressure control using 25 centimeters of water and volume control using two liters tidal volume so that each test lung, of four test lungs, each one would get about 500 mLs. We measured uh, the average tidal volume that was achieved during these ventilations and using pressure control at 25 centimeters of water, the average tidal volume was approximately 471 cc's and using volume control, the average tidal volume per test lung was approximately 510 mLs. So it worked very well. But how do you use this information because it's only been done on a test lung? Well, there's a few things that are somewhat intuitive. First of all, you want to make sure the lung sizes are the same in all four portions of the cycle or the circuit. You wouldn't want to put a pediatric patient with an adult patient because that wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't be able to ensure that the same volume is delivered everywhere appropriately. Likewise, you want to make sure the resistance is the same. You wouldn't want to put a patient with severe bronchospasm with a patient who did not have bronchospasm because that might cha change the amount of volumes and make sure it wouldn't make sure that they were equal volumes delivered to everybody. Additionally, in the study, we use the same length tubing for all four test lungs. So if you had one ventilator with four patients in a row such as that, the patients on the outside might need extenders to have the tubes reach the ventilator. For that reason, I would suggest what I call a, a half-star configuration so the ventilator in the middle, two patients on either side with the heads facing the ventilator, and two patients in the front with the heads facing the ventilator, and that way the same length tubing would be able to reach all four patients. Now, having said this, again, this has not been studied in humans. I will tell you it has been done in humans. There's a physician by the name of Dr. Kevin Menace. He is a practicing emergency medicine physician, and he was practicing in Las Vegas during the Las Vegas shooting disaster. And you can imagine with a lot of penetrating torso and CNS injuries, he intubated a lot of patients. Well, they received a large volume of patients very quickly and they ran out of ventilators. He actually trained in residency with Greg Namus, who was my co-author on this study, in residency at this institution, and he remembered this study. So when the respiratory therapist came up to him and said, we don't have enough ventilators, he said, okay, get a splitter, use one ventilator for two patients. And it was very successful. He was able to keep them alive for hours as they waited for outside ventilator support to come in and help them supply the patient need. So it, although it hasn't been studied in humans, it has been done in humans. Now in that particular case, he used two patients per uh, ventilator. And that setup is not that difficult to change. You simply use one T-splitter with one adapter and hook that up to the ventilator such as this. And that way you have two ports as opposed to four. Now there is something that, uh, that has not been studied that's important to mention is that we did not evaluate uh, the potential cross-contamination risk. This is a one-way circuit. So you imagine that the air is going one way and it connects back here so the risk is low, but we don't know that for sure. Now, if you envision using this during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, in that particular case, they all had the same infection. So that somewhat mitigates the concern about a cross-contamination risk because they all have the same infection. Um, I will tell you that uh, there's lots of different materials that you can use to configure it, such as a T-system like this, and your hospital may have something different, but you, you simply put it together as the way I showed you, 
you may have different size tubes, etc. But using that type of H formation will help, um, but you have to see what you have in, in your institution. Now here's my disclaimer. This is off-label use of the ventilator. The ventilator is made for one person, and I'm using it here in a simulation of four patients. Uh, and so we, I always hope that you would never need to use it uh, in this way, but you can never predict what's gonna happen in a disaster. And if it was me, and I had four patients, and they all needed intubation, and I only had one ventilator, I would simply have a shared discussion meeting with all four families and say, I could pick one to live, we can try to have all four live, but this is clearly off-label and likely would only be used in a dire circumstance, which we may see with COVID-19. I thank you for watching this video. I'd like to give a shout out thanks to my videographers, Chris Fester, Anita Van, and Garrett Rick, along with my respiratory therapists, Brian Jones and Sandy. Thank you for watching this video. Good luck to you and have a great day.